Hey everyone, this is Jerm, and today we have another college pro tips video, except this is actually a little bit of a deviation. This is going to be tips for high school. One of you submitted a question, and the question is, what things should really be focused on in high school compared to what they tell you, like figuring out what you want to do or what you need to prep for college? I think this is an excellent question, uh, especially for you who asked it. If you are in high school right now and you're trying to plan ahead for college, you are very smart because a lot of people your age are doing a little bit of planning or none at all. And by doing a little bit of prep work here, you can be significantly ahead of the curve. Not that it's necessarily a competition, but you know what I mean. You could be ahead of the pack a little bit going into college. So I think this is a great question for a couple reasons. Um, the first reason, of course, being what I just mentioned, that you'll be ahead of the curve. You're doing prep work when a lot of your peers aren't, so that's always good. Uh, another reason is you've already kind of figured out that just because there's conventional wisdom uh, or conventional teaching that you know, this is what you need to do to prepare for college. Um, it may not necessarily be true. Not that conventional wisdom is always bad. I'm not saying it is. Not at all. But each person's got a unique situation. And, you know, for you, it may not be the best thing to do. The conventional, okay, this is what you need to do to prepare for college. This is what you need to be ready for. It may not be what works for you. It may have worked for your parents, but they may have gone to college 30 years ago. And that stuff might not be as relevant as it is today, etc. Hopefully you understand what I'm trying to say. I'm not bashing your parents advice I'm sure it's good advice uh, and you should listen to it and you should respect it I'm not trying to bash conventional wisdom because a lot of the time it can be very helpful all I'm saying is instead what I'm trying to say is don't automatically assume conventional wisdom or advice is true just because someone else is telling you and swearing by it so what do I think is really important that you need to be focusing on in high school that is actually gonna help you in college well I'm just gonna tackle this by what things do I wish I'd done better in high school that would have prepared me more for college? Uh, what things did I realize in college that I should have done in high school? And then what things was I glad that I did in high school by the time I got to college? And the first thing I'm going to start with is uh, taking dual enrollment classes. Now, if you're not familiar with the concept of dual enrollment, what dual enrollment is, is you can go to a college in your area. Uh, usually it's a community college, but some actual universities uh, do have programs like this. And if they have an agreement with your high school, you can take actual real college courses there while you're in high school. And it will count, let's say uh, you took an English class, English 101. It might count as your senior English class in high school, and it could count as English 101 for university. Now, you may have just noticed what could be really cool about that. What could be really cool about that is then, then the next year when you go to university, you've already taken that class and you don't have to. You took the same amount of time that you would have already spent working on a class in high school, maybe a little bit of extra work for homework, a little bit extra time, and you got a college class out of the way. Um, you know, if you're already planning on going to college, it's a great thing to do. What I did. Uh, I did normal school through 10th grade, and then starting in 11th and 12th grade, I started doing as many classes as possible, dual enrollment, at a local community college. And it wasn't that nice of a community college, I'll be honest. It kind of felt like 13th grade, you know, it wasn't the fanciest thing out there. The teachers weren't the best, the students weren't the greatest, the campus wasn't the most amazing. It was just kind of average, but uh, it was at least as nice as the you know high schools in the area. And by taking some classes there, by the time I got to college, I was completely done with math, with science, um, what else? I had one English class I had to take that was just a literature class, so that, was, that wasn't that bad. Um, I had to take, I'd taken all my uh, psychology, um, I had to take one philosophy when I got to college. But I, I was able to shave off enough classes of the, you know, the primary first year uh, courses that everyone has to take, the gen ed requirements, general education requirements. I was able to shave enough of those off that I was able to graduate with a bachelor's degree in three years instead of four. Um, now, in case you haven't figured out what's so great about that, I was able to save a crap ton of money that I otherwise would have spent on another year of education. Would it have been fun to hang out at college for another year with my friends and everything? Well, yeah, of course it would. But uh, I'm glad I saved the money in the long run. That brings me to the next thing. And this is something I actually wish I'd done better. Um, I wish I'd saved more money when I was in high school. Uh, I can't stress enough how much saving is crucial. It will be for the rest of your life. And I understood that in high school. But in high school, I was actually making... I don't want to say this, I don't want to sound, 
ungrateful or anything, but I was probably making more money than I should have. Uh, yes, I was actually working for all the money, but I was making about $10 an hour, which was perfectly respectable for someone in high school, and I was working landscaping. Now, if you've ever worked landscaping, you know that it's very rarely a 40-hour work week, so there were quite a few weeks where I'd put in 60, 70, 80 hours of work, and therefore I was getting paid a lot of money. Also, I was kind of getting paid under the table at the time. Um, I didn't fully understand that when I started working landscaping at the age of 15. I eventually did figure it out and start paying taxes on it. But at the time, I was kind of dumb and didn't know what I was doing. So I was saving money. I saved a couple thousand dollars a summer usually. But I also spent a lot of money. Uh, my first car I bought when I was 16. I'd actually been saving for it since I was 12. I, I have always been good at saving money, so I don't want you to think I wasn't. But uh, hopefully this will kind of illustrate where my head was at. My first car I bought when I was 16, and it was a BMW. It wasn't the newest, nicest, fanciest BMW. It was a couple years old, but it was still a pretty nice car. Um, and I didn't... Now, when I say buy, I don't mean... I didn't start making car payments on it, because if you've seen my previous video on staying out of debt, you know how I feel about that. Now, I bought the car straight out uh, with a lot of money from landscaping. And... Um, I really enjoyed it. It was an awesome car. But I bought it, and then I was like, you know what? This radio needs to be nicer. So I pulled out the entire stereo system, learned how to wire stereos, and installed a $1,500 car stereo system. I mean, I, it sounded awesome. It was probably the best sounding car stereo I've ever heard. Most of my friends agreed. Um, it was just one of the best they'd ever heard. Now, I don't mean like the most pounding bass. It had nice bass. Uh, I did put in a very nice subwoofer and a very nice box, everything like that. But it wasn't like shake the mirrors off, uh, rattle your eyeballs bass. It was just very good, deep, solid bass, very sparkling, crisp highs, and I loved it. At the time, you'll probably laugh because this is probably more common now, but at the time, I could plug my iPod into it and control my iPod from the head unit itself, which I thought was just the most amazing thing ever. Um, and, you know, just stuff like that. Uh, I bought a new guitar. Uh, I bought a new large tube uh, half stack amplifier system. I was in a band at the time and we were kind of planning a tour my last summer before college. So I got some more gear for that. Um, and I was still saving money, but I was easily dropping a couple grand each summer on just stuff. Um, I got a nice television. Um, I got some computer equipment, just stuff like that and you know it was nice stuff but I realized about midway through my first year at college I could have saved a lot of that money because a lot of that stuff was really nice to have in high school but it didn't really matter that much once I got to college I couldn't play the guitar as much because of everyone else who lived in my dorm who it would have bothered um, I wouldn't want to roll around campus blasting my super loud stereo because I didn't want people to be looking you know giving second glances to my car I didn't want to make it a target for theft or anything like that and you know it just I kind of realized that it was just stuff, and as nice as it was, I didn't need to spend that much money on it, and I kind of wished I'd had that couple extra thousand bucks in my pocket to help me get through the semester for basic things that I actually needed, like food and toiletries and gas and car repairs and things like that. So I definitely, definitely, definitely save more money. If your high school offers any good personal finance classes, I would highly recommend you uh, take some. And, you know, with a critical eye, if, if your teacher is telling you the smartest thing you can possibly do is get a credit card when you get into college and start building your credit up, um, I urge you to ignore that. And if you uh, wonder why, you feel free to go watch uh, that video on staying out of debt. I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. But, you know, go ahead and uh, take the classes and see what you can learn from them. If your high school doesn't offer any personal finance classes, then I'm actually going to recommend a book for you. Um, the book I'm going to recommend is called The Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey. Now, please don't think he's just like some self-help guru that I'm trying to sell to you. I totally thought that when I first discovered him, but that's not the case at all. He actually just offers a lot of practical, uh, easy-to-use application wisdom for getting out of debt, staying out of debt, budgeting, making sure you always have enough money to pay your bills, to take care of the things you need to take care of. Um, and, I, and it really just broke down personal finance for me in a way that nothing else ever had. Um, just fair warning for anyone who would be bothered by this. He is a Christian, and he does uh, that is very obvious when you are reading the book. But he doesn't beat you over the head with it. And even if you're you're an atheist or you don't really care um, or you'd rather not be preached to when you're learning about money, uh, I understand. But 
trust me, he, he's not that preachy. He just kind of offers up his opinion. But even if you don't agree with his stance on uh, faith and religion, you can still learn a ton from the book. It's easily the best book I've ever read on uh, finance and personal money matters. So I heavily encourage you to take a look at it. Uh, even if you have some personal finance classes in your high school, um, I strongly encourage you to read it. The last thing I want to talk to you about, and I know this video has been kind of long, but if you watch this far, thank you for sticking with me, and uh, hopefully this last little tip will help you out some. Uh, I would encourage you to not get caught up exactly on what college you're going to. Um, now, what do I mean by that? Well, a lot of the time you hear the hype of you need to go to a good college, and what is it exactly does that mean? I mean, a good college, you assume it means they have good classes, good professors, they're going to teach you a lot, right? Well, you might be surprised to hear that most colleges are like that. Um, there are statistics to back it up. I'm not going to post them in the video because I'm sure that would be boring. But if anyone's interested, I can send you a bunch of links to stuff. Uh, but the college you go to actually does not have that big of an impact on how much you end up making and how fast you find a job. You'd be surprised. It mostly actually depends on you. You are the... You can either be the biggest problem or the biggest credit to your career and it's really up to you so the college isn't going to matter that much um, now unless you're planning on going somewhere like John Hopkins for medical or Harvard or Yale for law you know a name like that could possibly help you in getting a job and help your degree but for most everybody who's not doing that um, most colleges will be pretty good most colleges have decent size who are accredited things like that I'm not telling you to go down to Uncle Bob's uh, super overnight university down the street and print your degree out no not at all I'm saying accredited real universities most of them will be able to give you a good education if you want one so I would encourage you to find one that you can afford to go to uh, don't take out tons of student loans to pay for some forty thousand dollar a year college just because you think it's super nice and you really want to go there because you visited the campus and, and it was really awesome or something like that don't do that Look at a college you can afford that's going to be in a smart place for you to go to um, that has a good reputation. And chances are, if you're willing to put in the work, if you're willing to sacrifice and do whatever it takes to get ahead, you will be able to get a good education there. Uh, don't make excuses. Don't act like or don't convince yourself that you really need to go somewhere super expensive or really far away or something like that just to get an education because you really don't. Um, the biggest factor in your education is you, so start acting like it now when you're in high school. Uh, the biggest factor in how much money you're going to have is you. The biggest factor in how good of an education you'll get, how good of a career you'll get, it's you. You are the biggest factor in how good your life is, so start working on it today. Alright guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments uh, or any topics you want me to cover in future videos, go ahead and throw them into the comment section of this video and I'll do my best to answer them in an upcoming video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.